morning. Well, we're up to the plot today again. But first, I wanted to show you a few gorgeous little things in the garden. So yeah, we are going up to the plot, but I just wanted to show you some um, beautiful things that are in the garden. A lot of things are dying back now. Um, you know, it's a bit transitional, isn't it? Sort of late summer. So I just want to show you these, the hydrangeas um, that are doing amazingly despite the bad weather. These, all these hydrangeas are literally from cuttings. Um, petunia's looking a bit sad now. Um, this one's not doing as well. It just never gets enough nutrition in the ground, no matter what I give it, but it's still trying to flower. But I just wanted to show you this huge one here. Look at this beast. Now this was from a cutting from about, it's about three years old. Can you believe it? It does absolutely amazingly in pots. What I find my hydrangeas just do better in pots. Um, you can keep them well watered and you can um, give them the feed that they actually need and stuff like that. So yeah, that's the hydrangeas. And then I'll just show you this gorgeous Achillea as well. I just love this because it's just great for pollinators. It just gives it a structure to the garden as well. And um, also this Echinacea that's um, come out for the first time this year. It's, it's actually two years old. Not much of it, but you know, it's there. But look at this. Rudbeckia Goldsturm. I mean, I absolutely love this. I've got it sort of everywhere in the garden. Let me try and get a shadow out of the way. But look, you can sort of see the display it gives. It's just such an amazing plant. I'd never be without this. And I've tried some different Rudbeckia from seed this year. And there's a couple in pots there, but because they're in pots, they're looking a bit sad and they're dying a bit, but because of the lack of water. But yeah, look at this. Also, just wanted to show you, I've um, I, I grew a um, avocado plant from a pip, you know, avocado stone. Um, you can get like YouTube. You can go on YouTube and there's ways how to do it. It's really really easy actually to grow as a house plant, but. Um, it just absolutely loves like um, getting baked on the south facing windowsill that I've got here and so I read you can actually put them outdoors in the summer obviously they've got to be frost free in the winter so I'll bring it indoors but I've just potted it up because the roots were coming through it needed repot and I thought you know what? I'm going to put it in an outside pot and actually put it onto the decking at the back which gets full sun all day and it's red red hot so yeah I'm just going to show you that there we go look at this little beauty I've sort of been taking the growing tips out as well to try and make it push out more at the bottom. I think it's going to be quite happy there this summer, especially the heat we're having at the moment. And while we're here, let me just show you the beauty that is my Agapanthus. Look, I mean, absolutely gorgeous. Completely um, covered in flowers. Um, purposely keep it in a small pot so it flowers a lot better. I think it might just go up one size next year, but yeah, gorgeous. Okay, let's go to the plot. Also just wanted to show you the um, little prairie planting that I did in my front garden. Now this is again, got the Rudbeckia Goldstrom. I've got um, sedum at the ends and some grasses and crocosmia. So I think it looks rather gorgeous. Uh, there is a um, red hot poker in there, not a very big one, it's been cut back now, it's flowered a little bit, but yeah, gorgeous. Okay, we're off to the plot. Well, welcome back to plot 12. I've got a few jobs to be doing again today, some more weeding. I've done a lot of weeding the last couple of days, so I'm going to do some more weeding. And I'm going to sow some more... Um, biannuals um, for next year. Um, I've got some nice stock. It's a biennial stock, so that'd be quite nice for a change. I've already sown some wallflowers and some um, a sweet william. So they're in the greenhouse. Um, so I'm gonna sow that. And then I want to show you a couple of things. Um, developments 
let's go and have a look now, shall we? First of all, I want to show you the dahlias, which are literally um, doing fantastically. I mean, ab look, absolutely gorgeous. I was a bit worried about these for a while. They did have a bit of a slug attack. As you can see, absolutely stunning, stunning, stunning. So I wanted just to, basically just to brag, really. Very happy with these. This is their first year, actually. And with the Cosmos, I think it looks great. So I'm going to do this combo next year. So yes, let's go and have a look at the pumpkins next. Um, you probably know from my previous video that we've got a bit of a um, triffid going on down here. I'll show you what he's been up to. Okay, so here's triffid. So don't actually know what pumpkin variety this is because it was given to me by a plot neighbour. As you can see, this is where it starts. That's where it was planted. Now it's gone all the way over here. It's still going. I'm just letting it sort of go, sort of training it down the edge of the paths. Then it goes all the way here. And then there's another piece that's coming from this side. As you can see, coming from right the way over there all the way here so yeah and it's getting some different pumpkins again so we've got all kinds of different pumpkins we don't know what varieties they are so if you do know what varieties these are please just let me know in the comments quite little cute little pumpkins aren't they and then we've got obviously it's creating loads of fruit I know Monty Don said on Gardens World just to pinch out the, the fruits so they're not all gonna ripen but I sort of really not got the heart look there's so much fruit coming on these and then find it again where's he gone there he is look. that's so cute isn't it so yeah if you know which one this is so my plot neighbor said these are all supposed to be little yellow pumpkins um clearly not a little yellow pumpkin but he's sort of gone massive i'm sort of letting him do that is his thing really. Yeah, let's go and have a look at the other ones. So yeah, there's um, the small little yellow pumpkin. This definitely is a small little yellow pumpkin. Let me show you. It's my pumpkin obelisk. I know everyone's doing pumpkin arches, aren't they? I don't know if I've mentioned this previously on the vlog, but I had some spare obelisks from home that were just a bit gone past their best. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'll show you uh, what the progress is on this one. Okay, let's have a look. Oh yes, there he is. So yeah, I put these obelisks in here and the aim was to grow, because these clearly wants to climb. So I'm sort of training him up, look. And there's a few more fruits coming in and stuff. And this was just spare sweet corn that I had and I just put it in this bed with these uh, mystery pumpkins. Pumpkins come squashes. Now this one's growing slightly differently, but it's got loads of flowers and fruits coming. So, I mean, God knows, God knows. But yeah, that's him. Let me uh, let me show the other pumpkin. And yes, they're all in completely different places because I just stuck them where I had a space really because I didn't attempt to grow pumpkins this year. So let's have a look down. These are the back of the compost bins where it's like really really hot and sunny gets the sun and most of the day. Again, don't know what these are. I thought they looked a bit more like a courgette plant but now tell me is it courgette? What is it? <laughs> Considering they all are supposed to be exactly the same. There we go. This is going a little bit crazy as well. This is very rampant, this one. More flowers come in here. And then this one, a little bit weaker, but he has got a little fruit on the end. And there's some flowers here. I think he's just been struggling with the dry weather. And then this, some of you might have seen this on the last video or the last couple of videos. Yeah. Still don't know what he is, but you know, we like him anyway. It's the pumpkin update. Oh, right. Gorgeous day here. Absolute stunning. So I wanted to show you, um, remember we planted out the um, dwarf green beans 
um, in a spare patch of uh, ground that I had because I don't like to waste any bit of ground. So let me show you what that's been up to. So there you can see, they've all come up. And it didn't take them long. I had a bit of a weed here yesterday. And yeah, they've all come up. So I'm quite happy with this. Very happy. So yeah, that will fill the ground here. And also, any sort of legume, beans, peas, etc. Just leave the roots in the soil and it's really good to condition your soil as well. Because it pulls in the nitrogen and it keeps on nodules in the, uh, in the roots in the soil. So, happy days. So we've been having a tidy up of my uh, brassica beds yesterday and I pulled all the, um, the early broccoli out. I mean, it's gone past its best, so it's all gone and been composted now. So I'll show you that. But also, um, what I've been a bit of an issue with flea beetle and white fly infestations, which wasn't a problem. I think it's been, because it's been so dry, there's no rain being fallen. If they've just been allowed to do their own thing, really, quite annoying. So let me show you. Okay, so all the broccoli's come out of here now and the sprouts are doing really really well quite happy with these i mean these though look like they've sort of sprouted too early they look like they've blown at the bottom so sprout exports experts please let me know but yeah you can see the sprouts are coming so quite happy with these okay sprout experts let me know um purple sprouting is doing well Looks like a little bit of pest damage, but yeah, the kale bed's doing really, really well. But I don't know if you can see the white fly that are coming off here. Um, yeah, and it's it's got this type of damage on it. And let me try and focus. Is it like really? dried up. I mean obviously the weather's not helped but tiny little holes it's like flea beetle damage um, I suppose the white flies not doing doing any good either but um, yeah looking quite dried which is a bit of a shame because uh, this was doing so so well so question how do you control your white fly and flea beetles now i googled it and it said soapy water could do the trick so that's what i've tried yesterday some diluted washing up liquid and give it a spray they didn't seem to like it when i did it so that's i suppose good news so we'll see and maybe we'd give it another go today but any tips please yeah in the comments below how do you deal with flea beetle and um white fly look at that cabbage white trying to get in they so so want to get in don't they demons while we're here i'll just show you the celery which i'm absolutely ecstatic with um i grew all this from seed and i just put Planting the said planting them close together. It's self blanching. It's Utah. Let me try and so so good. I'm just, it's so healthy. Um, question: When do we when do we know it's ready for picking? It looks quite good. Um, but let's have a look. see, yeah, there you go. There's a question for you. Look at this little bumblebee doing his thing, pollinating my raspberries. Good on you, mate. Keep going. Keep going. I need, I need a few more raspberries than I've got. Okay, so I'm going to sow the stock now, and I'll just show you how I do it. You could do it however you want to do it. Um, this is what I method I find works for me. Okay, so we're going to sow some biennial stock. 
I got this from Wilco's and if you don't know yet, I'm sure you do if you're a gardener, Wilco's got 70% off all their seeds at the moment, which is an absolute bargain. So I've just gone and got all mine for next year and obviously bits and pieces, you can't resist it. I mean, for those prices, you know, madness. Anyway, so this is a hardy uh, biennial, stock Brompton mixed. And obviously with biennial, he will flower the following year. So I'm going to get those in now. As I said earlier, I've sown the sweet william and wallflowers already. So that should give me a nice early boost of colour. So, um, yeah, it does say so directly outside, but I never do. Because I was a bit scared that they are going to get lost, shall we say. So anyway, let's, let's get this sown. So... She's the standard seed tray and the, I've got um, sieved um, peat free compost here because like, these seeds are quite small so I always sieve it if it's quite small and but I've got about uh, I'd say 50-50 mix of vermiculite probably less than 50 I'd say probably 60% compost to 40% vermiculite anyway so, so I'm just yeah I've got Got my seed mix here and then what i like to do because it's quite dry this actually so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna dampen it a little bit not too much i'm just gonna dampen it i find like the seed the mixture is a bit too dry then you sort of seeds are sort of hindered from the start really so a little bit of dampness there and then i'm gonna get these seeds opened take the gloves off um, it says so thinly, it always says so thinly, doesn't it? Okay. Let's have a look. In my experience, stock seeds are very, very small. So, let's have a look. small actually not very many of them either I don't know if you can see that so yeah well they will be sewn thinly won't they because there's not many here so yeah so literally I just do is I just use it as a like a pinch of you no know, pinch of salt or when you're cooking and just try and put them, space them out as best you can as you, you know, you sprinkle them really. I know it sounds like uh, teaching your granny how to suck eggs, but anyway, this is what I do. You know, some people tune in might not have done this before, and some people have done it four million times. So anyway, so they're on there, so time to cover them over. Just lightly because they're only small seeds so they don't really need a huge depth and yeah just cover these over slightly so this has all been sieved there is some still big pieces that came come through you find a lot of peat free compost so I like that um, but any big bits of twigs and stuff like that you can just pull out um, and then I just Press it down just to make sure you've got decent contact between the compost and the actual seed. And then give it another good water. It should appear 14 to 28 days. So yeah. So yeah, all nicely covered with compost, firmed down of water i might get another washer with a watering can when i take it outside now so it's nice and damp and with this heat we've been having i should germinate quicker <laughs>
so much for watching today. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to try and keep putting more content out on my days off. Um, I just got back from LA a couple of days ago, so I was just uh, catching up on some weeding and some little jobs. So, yeah. Uh, if you do like the channel, please feel free to share, uh, like, subscribe. I'd love for you to subscribe. Um, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.